The Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, is the way that networks are able to route information around hosts. We'll show you how this can be a treasure trove for hackers looking to identify other hosts on a network on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In order for a host device, like a computer or smartphone, to communicate across a network, it needs to manage two different types of addresses. The first is a MAC address, and you can kind of think of this like an electronic serial number that follows a device around and rarely changes. Now there is one notable exception, and this is Windows devices that actually assign their own unique per-connection uh, MAC address. And while this is interesting, it is not the norm, so you can generally assume that your MAC address will not change. Now, in contrast to this, there's the IP address, which is kind of like the address on the network that's assigned to you by the router when you first join. This ensures that any packets can be sent back to your device on the network, but both of these addresses will need to be combined in order to make sure that it can be delivered successfully. Now, this is what the ARP table does. It basically has a giant table linking different IP addresses to different MAC addresses, ensuring that packets can be delivered to those devices on the network. Now, hackers can take advantage of this simply by looking into their own ARP cache and seeing devices that have been discovered. However, they can also run their own ARP scans in order to discover active hosts on the network as well. We'll use a couple different tools to do so, and in general, these all work great on Linux. But if you're using Windows, then you might need to use an approximate tool in order to follow along or maybe use a virtual machine. Once you have a computer that's connected to a network that you have permission to scan, then we can begin. Now, in order to get started using the address resolution protocol, the first thing we can do is check out our own ARP cache. Now, the ARP cache is where we save basically the associations our computer has learned about MAC addresses and IP addresses on the network. And initially, we may only see the one that leads to the default gateway, although this may increase as we stay on the network for a longer period of time. Now, to check this out on a Linux system, you can just type ARP and then tag A. Here, we can see the route to the default gateway is 192.168.0.1, which is the minimum IP address for this particular network range, and it's mapped to this MAC address here. Now, we've also detected that that is an Ethernet connection on our wireless, uh, here we can see right here, on our wireless card. So that gives us a little bit of information about one route we can take in order to get to another host. Now, obviously, this isn't enough information itself, so we can use a very basic tool that just sends out ARP scans to a particular network range, and there's even a more simplified version of it that we can use so we can scan a whole network in just two commands. So first, let's take a look at the tool, which is ARP scan. So this is a great tool because you can download it relatively easily just by apt install ARP scan, and you can see there's a lot of different flags that you can add in order to make it more useful. Now here you can see one of the most useful ones is just tac tac local net or tac l, which will automatically attempt to get the IP address for the network you're on and then scan every possible uh, IP address looking for a MAC address associated. Now this is probably the most useful way of using this because you don't need to really worry about it uh, or kind of calculating it manually. So to get started here, we'll type ARP scan and then tac l. Now, oops sudo arp scan oops sudo there we go wow and just like that we now have all this information about hosts on the network now if you look at the arp cache you can see that we still didn't learn anything else specific on this computer the results that were returned were just kind of sniffed by this program and our arp cache hasn't been updated at this point to include any of the routes to these devices. In spite of that, we were still able to run our own ARP scan and get back the results indicating that there are actually quite a lot of active hosts on this network. Now, while this is simple, it's also pretty noisy. So in order to understand what's happening, I'm gonna open another window. And when we shift to our next tool, which is a little bit more advanced, I'm gonna show you the difference between running these in a quiet mode and a more noisy mode, just so you can see what a defender or someone looking at their network traffic might see. So I'll go ahead and create a new window and then sudo Wireshark. Wow. 
And as soon as Wireshark opens up, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this wireless network interface right here. And we should start to see the flow of packets across the network. Now you can see these ARP requests are going out that's basically asking, hey, who has this IP address tell this IP address in response? So a successful ARP response will say, hey, I, this IP address right here is at this MAC address like that. And that is the entire fundamental process that the ARP protocol will do in order to find where other devices are on a network. Now this is pretty cool to see, but let me put this over here and I'm going to run, go ahead and run another scan just using the ARP scan tool. And I want you to see how noisy it really is and how noticeable it can be. So let's go ahead and rerun the scan. And you can see there is a flood of ARP packets going out requesting who has which MAC address. And it really does uh, cause quite a flood of traffic onto the network initially, which is quite recognizable. And you can even see there are some follow-up ARP requests that are going off. So if we wanted to avoid this, there are different tools that allow us to be a little bit more stealthy when we're running this sort of command. Now the tool I'm going to discover today or go over today is NetDiscover. So NetDiscover is really useful and can be installed relatively simply by following these instructions. First, you'll need to go to the GitHub repository and clone the repo by in a terminal window typing git clone and then the address that you clone from here. Now I've already installed this, but once you install it, you can go ahead and CD into it and you can see the installations are simply to type dot, dot slash configure, make, and then make install. Now after this is done, you should be able to use it to send out ARP requests. And we'll take a look at the way it works by typing man net discover. So you can see this is an active slash passive ARP reconnaissance tool. And in order to use it, we can usually just get, discover, uh, get discovering uh, nearby devices with a simple one line command. Now, if we take a look at Wireshark, we can see the same situation we had before. We're sending out a giant flood of ARP requests. So while we're getting results really quickly, we're doing it at the expense of quite a bit of noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop, and this program will normally run continuously, allowing us to see maybe if a new device has joined the network and suddenly is announcing itself with an ARP request, or maybe a device that was down before suddenly comes back up and starts responding to these requests we're sending out. Now there is another feature we can use, which is much more stealthy. So now I'm gonna rerun the scan with TACP, which is passive, and you can see that's noted here. And you'll note that there's actually no ARP requests going out, yet we're still starting to resolve various MAC addresses and IP addresses, we've already found two. So what we're doing now is actually sitting quietly on the network and waiting for other ARP requests to go out, and then taking advantage of the information they bring without actually having to reach out ourselves. Now, if another computer on the network starts to send out ARP requests, we should see them going over uh, Wireshark without them actually coming from our computer. Now, when this happens, it's really useful because it basically allows us the same ability to see every single device that's uh, replying to the ARP request without necessarily needing to send out the request ourselves. Now, a good thing, and here we go. So we can see another device on the network is sending out a bunch of ARP requests, and this is allowing us to map a whole bunch, in fact, 503 ARP requests, and this is allowing us to link additional MAC addresses to IP addresses on the left. Now this technique can be really stealthy and prevent you from being noticed by someone. So while usually the way of doing this would be to spoof your MAC address first, by using a passive ARP uh, listener, you can sit on the network and passively scan for any devices that are sending ARP requests themselves. By understanding the way the address resolution protocol works, it's easy for a hacker to identify active hosts on a network without necessarily needing to scan the whole network. Now the way this works is because we can simply sit back and passively scan for ARP requests without needing to send any out of our own. Although if we are sending out ARP scans, we should make sure to change our MAC address first. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or future ideas for episodes, send me a message on Twitter because I would love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.